Hey, it's Ken with Aero Charger. We're here today to do the install on our 2014 Razor 1000. We're gonna put a 66 series turbo on this thing and it's gonna make some big power. It's very easy to install, so let's roll up our sleeves and get into it. The Razor's already been partially disassembled for our install. It's all very straightforward. Uh, there's nothing that you can't handle with basic shop tools or hand tools here. Uh, what you don't understand, you can consult your shop manual. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is pull the header off. There are six bolts that connect the header to the head and they're six millimeter ball allen and you'll have two springs that you'll need a spring puller for. We've already taken apart the bolts and the springs off and we're just gonna pull the header out and set it aside. Okay, we have three bolts in the top here that hold the bracket on that holds the muffler. We're gonna remove those. Next, we're gonna take the muffler cover off. Use your spring puller, pull this bottom spring. Pull this top spring. And slide the muffler out. Use a 10 millimeter and take four bolts. And there's a wire nut right here that you have to pull out. It holds the wire strain up. Now we're going to pull the muffler bracket off. You'll take a, use a quarter inch socket to take the clamps off the throttle bodies and a 13 millimeter socket and wrench to take the bolt loose that holds the bottom mount for the air box. We've already loosened the clamps, so we're going to, and, and loosen the lower nut. So we're going to slide it back, pull our clamps off. This makes it easier to get out. Now we're gonna remove this bottom bolt, the, the lower mount for the air box. Okay, we're gonna, now we're gonna pull our intake tube from the air cleaner to the air box. We've removed the clamp from the crankcase vent to the intake tube. We've removed the clamp from the air cleaner to the intake tube. And we've removed the clamp from the intake tube to the air box. And we're gonna take this 10 millimeter bolt out And we're going to save it for part of our install. Okay, we're going to take out the engine cover. We're going to disconnect the injectors and the fuel line. There's a little plastic clip on here. You just push back and just pull it up out of the way. The quarter inch socket, loosen the clamps on the throttle bodies, loosen this other clamp. I'm going to remove the TPS harness and pull it back out of the way. Now we're going to pull the throttle bodies carefully. I'm going to take a couple of shop rags and stick into the intake manifold so we don't get any debris in the engine. I'm going to remove the throttle by wire harness and stuff another shop rag in the intake manifold to keep debris out. All right, you got some tie wraps to cut off of this harness, take loose from the air box, and pull your differential vent tube out, lay it aside, and then just roll your air box forward and pull it out. Okay, as you can see, we've pulled the seats out. We're gonna pull this door and this rocker panel in order to run our harness for uh, our fuel controller and our boost lines. We've taken the seats out already. I'm gonna pull this little door out in the center, which helps us gain access to where our turbo mount is. There's a small clip on the bottom of these two pins, hinge pins for the door. You can use a screwdriver, get in there, and pick the little clip out, and then just push the pin out. We have a bunch of T40 Torx screws in the fender plastics, the rocker panel that we're gonna remove as well as a bunch of these little plastic push pins. I've got a special pair of pliers that I use to take them out, but you can also use a small screwdriver. After you take them all out, there's some inside here, back in behind here that you've got to remove, and back underneath the front. 
We've got them all loosened up and removed already here. And we'll just take and roll this rocker panel out. But the next thing we're going to do is tap our manifold for our boost signal and our arrow commander. You'll need uh, the, the manifold tap kit, a drill, some red Loctite, and some sort of a tap driver. Okay, we've drilled our hole in the manifold. Now we're going to run a tap through it. You want to make sure you get any debris out. So you don't want that running through your engine. You take a little bit of red Loctite, just a dab. I'm going to take a 3 8 socket and just snug that up. There's an O-ring, so you don't want to tighten it too tight. And after we put the signal tap in, I'm going to go ahead and put the throttle bodies back on, hook up the TPS, and then hook up the MAP sensor. Slide the throttle bodies back in the intake. All right, now we're snugging the uh, intake clamps up. We'll go ahead and leave the injectors unplugged because we have a our air commander harness goes in there next. Okay, from the stock air box, you're going to want to push out this bushing from both sides, and then just set it aside. You'll use the bolt and the bushing and the nut from the lower mount on the stock air box. And you're going to put it back in here. In the lower mount of the aerocharger air box. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is install the air box. I like to take the clamps off of the silicone, tuck the fuel line inside the charge tube inlet outlet and just slide it in here it's kind of snug fit but it can be pushed in there put your clamps on the silicone the passenger side you'll face the clamps to you here and the driver's side you'll face them the other direction. You can put your bottom bolt in. Thirteen millimeter wrench and socket. Next thing we're gonna do is pull our fuel line out of the air box. Make sure the harness is over the top of it. We're gonna bring our other harness back over the other side of the throttle bodies. Bring our fuel line back down from where we had it. Pull the plugs out of our fuel line. Snap it on. Fuel line's installed. Next thing we're going to do is install our exhaust header. The six factory bolts. You'll need a, a number six ball in Allen and a gasket. The gasket's already stuck up on there. Whenever you're installing your header, you'll want to start from the center. It's easier to put the bottom two bolts in first because you can kind of pick the manifold up. If not, it's kind of a pain in the butt. The next thing we're going to do is install our turbo and it is fairly heavy so we're going to have to have an assistant, have another set of hands. <clears throat> we'll uh, slide the turbo in here from the side and have uh, Chris hold it up on the inside there. We get a bolt started. Push it in a little bit. And you just run your bolts in by hand. That's good. Thanks, Chris. Snug them all down. You use a 17 millimeter wrench or socket to tighten them up. All right, our next step is to drill our holes for our intercooler. This template is provided in the kit. You'll cut it out along the lines, lay it in the bed here. It lines up with the contours of the bed. You'll use a quarter inch hole uh, drill to drill 
the center line out and a two and a half inch hole saw to drill the holes out. We've already got the holes drilled. Next step is to mount the intercooler. Loosely assemble the brackets to the intercooler. In the kit, you'll have the intercooler wrapped, the front and rear brackets wrapped individually, and a bolt kit. You put the bolts in, loosely assembled. We've removed the bolts from the back of the roll bar, and in the intercooler mounting kit will be another set of bolts that will bolt in to this safety restraint bracket right here. We'll just lay them aside. I said we've loosely mounted our brackets. We're going to set the intercooler up in here over the holes that we drilled. Just set it down in there for a second. We install one of the front bolts. Everything's loosely installed. Then the other one. Okay, and then we come back here to the rear. Everything's still loosely installed. Slip one of the bolts in there, preferably the bottom one first. There's a little pocket that the nut fits in on the back side of the roll bar. You hold it in there with your finger and start the bottom bolt. The same thing with the top bolt. Stick the top bolt in. You'll want to center your holes up. And then you can start putting the intercooler tubes on now. All right, our next step is to install our silicone. We're going to do charge tube one, which is from the compressor outlet to the front port of our intercooler. Tighten these down with a seven millimeter socket. Be careful not to over tighten them. Our next step is to hook up our air intake to the factory filter box and our turbine inlet. I'm going to snug everything in place by hand and then you can reach up through the back of the engine cover to tighten it. Our next step is to take our crankcase vent and hook it up into the intake tube. Use a pair of dikes or whatever you have to crimp this down, just don't over tighten it. It doesn't take much, it's just a crankcase vent, there's no pressure. We're going to center our tubes in the holes we drilled and go ahead and snug up, tighten up the intercooler brackets. We've got our intercooler snugged up, now we're going to tighten the front charge tube. We're going to install the second charge tube from the intercooler to the air box. Now that we've got our charge tubes in, we'll go ahead and put the, the uh, clutch vent tube back in. It just snaps back up into plastic and tightens up with a quarter inch clamp.